Alright, all right, it's time to start the video. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Have you guys ever had Celsius? Focus. There it is. Celsius is a really good alternative to energy. It's an energy drink, but if you're like me and have been drinking all the bad ones, like the monsters and stuff, good alternative, still carbonated. They have a non-carbonated version. Disgusting, tastes like juice, so you do not want that. But you don't care about that, that's not why you're here. This video is about the Sony K3M. I'm gonna get to that in just a second, but I'm gonna explain to you why I purchased this device for the A7R4. I have been a working video professional for a, for a number of years now. I also do photography, which is why I have these hybrid cameras like the a7 III that I'm recording on right now and the a7R4, which I recently just purchased because Sony still hasn't announced the a7S III and I'm saving up for the FX9, which is gonna be about a $15,000, $20,000 investment when it's all said and done. So I decided to pull the trigger on this a7R4, but then I, I remember whenever they announced this a7R4 that they they were announcing a that, that it has a dig, more more pins in the hot shoe so that you can get devices like this K3M that will just give you direct digital audio baked right into your SD cards, well, right into your files. For me as a working professional, I'm always trying to find things that are durable, dependable, that I, I know whenever I need to go to it, I, it'll, it's just gonna work and it's gonna make my workflow simpler. I, of course, use the H6, who doesn't have a, an H5, H4N, something like that. Yes, I understand this, but whenever I, I can now go to an interview shoot and I do not have to bring another device with its own batteries and then worrying about battery life and those kind of things, that's one less thing. And whenever I get back to edit, it's one less thing I have to do uh, even though as easy as it is to sync audio and video these days, it's nice to just have it built directly into my SD. This is a C200. This is a cinema camera. This has a Super 35 sensor and all that. Similar, not similar, but it's similar in the fact that it's a cinema camera to the FX9 that I'm trying to save up for. But when it comes to audio on these kind of cameras, if you've never used them before, they typically have built-in XLR inputs. For me, what that means is it gives me versatility, it gives me options, it gives me safety. So I, for documentary setup, I might have this thing set up with a boom mic right here, and then I might have a lavalier mounted to it in input two. So input one, boom mic, input two, lavalier, and, and I throw the lavalier on whoever it is maybe I'm following around. And now I've got two sources of audio. And if something happens, maybe someone was really close I'm talking to and the person with the lavalier was far away, I've got the audio right here. Or maybe there was something wrong with the lavalier audio whenever I was talking to the person with the lav on. Now I've got the boom. So it, it, it's given me options and I can just choose. Uh, whenever you're recording, you can choose which audio track you wanna use. It bakes both inputs, audio inputs into the file and then I use Final Cut Pro, I can just mute one and turn on the other or vice versa or whatever, it just gives me versatility. Sony did come out, I think it's called the K2M something, it, it was the predecessor to the K3M here. But what this thing gives you is it gives you two inputs, XLR inputs. Another reason I wanted to go this direction is I've been using uh, boom mics like the, the V-Mic D3 Pro, which is kind of similar to the Rode mic uh, you know, all the, all the Rode video mic pros and all that kind of thing uh, it has, I don't have, I have it naked right here. And it's a fantastic mic, love this mic, love Deity as a, as a company. However, I wanted to get more professional microphones. Uh, so I've been hearing really good things and I, I also love Rode. So I got the NTG5 recently. Whenever you're not using professional mics like this, you have to use things like 3.5 millimeter cables instead of your nice XLR cable. So as you can see, quite a difference between the thickness of these two. These cables are more balanced. There's a lot more going on. They're a lot sturdier. There's a lot, you can buy cheap XLR cables, but I don't, I, I get the pig hog cables. But, um, and I've never really had much issues with these other than buying crappy 3.5 millimeter cables. And whenever you do that, you know, I, and I always super glue all the joints on my cables and stuff like that as extra protection. But it's just not as professional. There's more risk there. And uh, I wanted to be able to use more professional mics like this NTG5 you're hearing me on right now. And just so you know, you are hearing me on the NTG5 into the K3M. I have it recording on the A7R4 right here and then I'm, I'll sync that in, in post. So this whole video was made using this. I'm, I wasn't, I'm not gonna do a comparison as to what the preamps sound like in the H6 and then in the K3M. 
Um, it, it sounds good. Don't you're not going to notice a difference. So there's no point in me doing that. And it's definitely going to sound better than the preamps that are built into to the cameras because everyone knows the cameras do not have good preamps built in. With this device, I can be sitting on set and I can have two channels of audio being baked into my video files and I can get back to my computer and choose which one I want to use. So maybe, I, you know, make sure you're always monitoring your audio while you're doing interviews, but I, maybe there was an issue with the boom mic or something like that and then the, the lavalier didn't, didn't have that issue. So I can just choose to use that and if you know how to EQ your audio, you can kind of make them sound a little bit similar. But it's a, it's a safety because maybe you're interviewing somebody and it's a really raw moment, something emotional and then you don't wanna have the audio screw up. As we know, audio is 50% of our job. Don't overlook your audio. You have to make sure you're putting in the work and just as much attention to detail with your audio as you are with the video. We all love lenses and camera bodies and all these kind of things, but you gotta be paying attention to your audio because you can forgive crap video way faster than you can forgive crap audio. The K3M also comes with this nice condenser microphone, the ECM XM1. I haven't looked up how much this might cost. I've heard from other videos that this is a pretty good microphone. Um, and the reason I'm making this video, by the way, is because I didn't see any a comprehensive review of this K3M like me as a video professional would want to see. So I hope this is helping you. I will probably not really use this microphone very much. Um, I, I'll do a test of, of how this mic sounds at some point. But what I can do is, like right now I have it in input two, I'll take this thing off of there. Unfortunately, it has like a mount built on right here. I would have liked to have been able to buy this without that microphone and then maybe it would have been cheaper. I think the K3M is normally $600. I got it on sale for 500 on B&H. It would have been nice maybe it was if it was 300 bucks without this microphone, but it is what it is. It's got its own little shock mount kind of built in there, which is, which is nice. I just don't really see myself walking around with that on here handheld I guess I guess I could whenever I wouldn't have like the, the NTG5 plugged in but I guess that's okay the good thing is is the K3M is not very light and not very heavy on the on the top of your camera so whenever you're doing interviews you never want to have anything heavy on the top of your camera because it can just add a little bit more shake and, and, and if you barely touch your camera it's gonna kind of jiggle a little bit but let's just kind of spin around to go through some of the stuff on here so um, I have input one right here and this is what the NTG5 is in, is doing right now. And I have it at about three, level three. And I, on, my, on the back of my camera, I'm actually getting, it looks like I'm about negative 12. And then up here I have zero dB, 10 dB, 20 dB. So if I wanted to add some more gain to the, to the mic, if I ever needed that. In my career, I've never needed to do that, but you know, it is what it is. Right here we have line, mic, and then mic plus 48 volts. The NTG5 needs plus 48 volts, phantom power. Manual, never put your audio stuff on auto, even the C200. On the back, you can slide the little switch up on there and put that in auto. All auto is gonna do is try and get the best audio for what it's hearing. So that means it's gonna have to raise the volume of the entire room in order to capture your voice better. So you wanna control that volume. You don't wanna let the camera do that. So never put these things in auto unless you just really don't know what you're doing. Uh, moving over, input two, the exact same. I have it on link right now. And what that means is my the NTG5 is being put into two, channel one and channel two. So whenever I get back to my computer, I don't have to do dual mono or anything like that. I'm just getting a stereo signal right now. But I could slide this up into manual and then input one and input two would be its own separate things. It, or it, I, if I had, I would be recording the this condenser mic on the top separately than the NTG5. But I didn't need to do that for this video. But if I were, let's say that where this condenser is was a lavalier, I would have that separately and it, they would be recording separate and I can choose in post which one I wanted to use. Plus 48 on that one as well. And then over here, you can put your low cut on. So input one off, input two off, but you can go all, all from 100 Hertz, 300 Hertz on both. I typically don't really do that. I just fix it in post, but maybe, Maybe I'm wrong if you are more of an expert than I am. And then right here we have input three. Input three is a 3.5 millimeter. So if you do have a need to use 3.5 millimeter, it's right here on the side of the K3M. So right here, hopefully you can see that. I'm looking on my monitor. Right here is a little, there's a little 3.5 millimeter. Now the thing is to remember, 
is that you cannot record three channels at the same time. So what you can, let me spin around, this will be a good opportunity to talk about that. So right here we have input one, input one and two, or input three. So typically doing the dual recording like I've been talking about, I would slide this up to input one and two. Um, I'm not doing that right now again, I'm, since I'm just using the NTG5. But then, uh, so I have it in input one. Or you can choose input three, so you'll only be able to record input three by itself and not with anything else. Right here is digital and analog, and what that means is since this hot shoe has a digital receiver in it, that the, the Sony A7R4 and the Sony A92, I believe, have this digital hot shoe so that your audio can pass directly through and go right in digitally. But the K3M is backwards compatible, so I could put this on the A7 III, what I'm recording on right here, and I can still use it. I would just flip this, this dial down to analog. The K3M might not be right for you. Maybe look for the K2M and see maybe how much that costs right now. I believe it's kind of the same, except it just doesn't have that digital switch right there. But I think you'll, you'll be able to get your two inputs. This is just something to consider for you as, as someone who is a professional and maybe you're like me and you can't afford a cinema grade camera yet. I cannot wait until I can get the FX9. Every single person that posts reviews and stuff of the FX9 I watch them. Make sure you check out Philip Bloom's like two and a half hour review of the FX9. What a camera. But until I can, I'm just doing buying things like this to increase my professionalism and hopefully be able to afford that whenever I need to. But it's great that we live in a time like this where we have so much available to us like with technology and with cameras and stuff like that. Right now, you can go to Best Buy, buy A7R4, A7 III, whatever camera, and go out and start making money with it. As long as you know what you're doing, that's all I did. And I've, I've made quite a bit of money over the last couple of years. I, I put in my time for learning and education, but I, I've been really thankful for the opportunity to have equipment like this. And we live in such a crazy time of technology that uh, with the internet and things like that, that we can buy certain things like this and really just keep, keep increasing our game and, and really be looked at as professionals. So if you have any questions about the K3M, please let me know. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I might've missed. You can still see your audio readouts right here as I'm talking, I, channel one, channel two. If I had it split where channel one was uh, boom mic, channel two was lavalier mic, then you'd be seeing them at probably different volumes and not exactly the same like they are right now. The only thing you can't do is go into the camera and change your audio levels like you normally do. You have to do it on the little dials on the side of the K3M. So I think that's it for me. If you have any questions about this thing, let me know down in the comments. I would love to talk to you about the, the FX9 uh, or this, this thing, A7R4. Why did I buy that instead? Really, it was I needed another body and I, needed, I wanted to, to try out the video eye autofocus. I haven't had a chance to use that yet, actually. What 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 stuff do you buy to up your professionalism? Uh, what kind of gear helps? We all love gear and things like that, but I'm getting more and more of like, every piece of gear that I buy really has to have a purpose and I have to be intentional with my purchases. Because number one, I don't want to blow money on stuff, but also, you have a goal and if in like for the FX9 for me and if you don't have that goal you're just blowing money on stuff and you're never gonna attain it because you keep spending money on stuff as I'm sitting here with a brand new a7r4 but um, I really did need another camera body for the kind of work that I do what kind of work do you do would love to talk to you more about it down in the comments below appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video